TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Good afternoon. This is TNCRadio.live, and this is the Truckers Network Radio Show with your host, Shelly Johnson. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live. We're all about the news, talk, information, and entertainment that drivers want to hear. You know, eating right and eating well are two things that drivers often find very hard to do on the road. And fast food generally is a staple that can wreak havoc over years of eating it. Jen and Al Cole are team drivers who have a Facebook group called Cooking on the Truck. They offer innovative tips and ways to eat well while on the road. They teach drivers, especially new drivers, to get into the habit of eating on their trucks rather than eating fast food. Welcome, Jen. I appreciate you being on the show. And say hi to Al for me. I understand he can't be with us today, but I'm sure you've got some great tips for us. Oh, yes. Thank you for having me here today. For those who aren't familiar, could you tell us a little bit about your group and, and what you teach drivers who probably often say, that can't be done? <laughs> well, Cooking on the, tr- on the Truck was first started years ago by a, a fr- another friend of ours who wanted to show people what she was creating on the truck um, by using simple devices like a slow, co- uh, a slow cooker or even a rice cooker to, heat make, to make these amazing meals. We've had people make gourmet meals, style meals. Wow. And um, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's fine. (laughs) I'm trying. My words just left my head. I've had that happen too. But we, our goal is for people who come join our group is learning how to even just basically using the 12 volt lunch box cooker to make any meals they can on the truck without having to go into a truck stop to buy fast food. You need Taco Bell and McDonald's every day, even so they don't have to eat Subways every day. I would think that a lot of drivers would say gourmet meals. You can do that. I'm I'm surprised. Yes. We had uh, one member who used to make um, shrimp scampi. She's done chicken tangine. She's made biscuits with using a lunchbox oven. This woman was very talented with, with what she set her mind to to make. And you don't have to necessarily be a cook, am I correct? I mean, um, I'm, I'm called probably cooking impaired by a lot of people. So <laughs> We have a lot of those in the, in the truck, and then they learn as they start, start doing, like making just using the lunchbox oven to make simple scrambled eggs for their morning breakfast. Mm-hmm. Once you get it heated up, it only takes um, maybe 30 minutes to cook the eggs. You can make overnight oats in the, in the lunchbox oven or... Um, what else we've done? We've had people who do that, make their stews and they do barbecue ribs and, and they're surprised at how well it comes out when it finally is finished cooking. So how do you connect all these things? I, I would assume you could have like a crock pot even. A crock pot, um, usually requires an inverter, which is okay. a device connected to your bat directly to your truck batteries, mm-hmm. then converts the bat, the 12 volt system of your truck to what's equal to the electricity in your house. So you can run household devices Mm -hmm. and using that, using that inverter, you can plug in a slow cooker, a rice cooker, a microwave. The latest device we all have, most people have in their trucks now Mm -hmm. is a Galan's three in one microwave that does microwave air fryer and convection oven. And we're getting people baking cakes and cupcakes and frying their steaks. Say that again. What was that? Using a Galan's three-in-one microwave, people Galan. are frying up their steaks. Okay, Galan three-in-one. Okay. That's pretty cool. So now, do most companies allow this? Uh, it's usually not a problem? For most companies, that's correct. It's not a problem. They use Some companies do provide up to a 1,500-watt inverter. Mm-hmm. Um, Others will provide a higher one, or they provide an APU that has a generator on it, which will provide the electricity needed to power um, some smaller microwaves or other devices. Then there are some companies who don't allow anything for whatever reason, and these are the people who use usually will use the lunchbox oven or the Road Pro, Road Pro 
roaster oven. Mm -hmm. And that's when they cook smaller meals and people go, but how can I make something using this device? And they'll call, they'll say, well, using the lunchbox, we go, you can cook anything you want in it. You're only limited by your imagination. It just got to cook smaller, smaller portions. Sure. I had not heard of a lunchbox lunchbox oven before. Where would you find that? Do you buy it online? It, or? It's actually sold at every truck stop in America. Okay. Okay. It looks it it's it looks like one of the old Stanley Square lunchboxes. Not the children's lunchbox, but the adult one that came with the Stanley thermos and they used thermos went in one half sure, and you had sure. the milk cup in the other half. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, it looks just like one of those except it's designed to heat up to 350 degrees. Okay. And we'll cook a meatloaf for lasagna for you. Yum. So now where do drivers keep all the ingredients? I'm sure that uh, you probably get some people saying, well, I don't have space for that. How do, how do they do all of this? Uh, most drivers now, the ones who have experienced, have, if they're team drivers, mm-hmm. they usually clean off the upper bunk. And that's become store, their storage area. And they will put a fr- refrigerator up there, a mm-hmm. dorm size or hotel dorm size refrigerators. Uh, we have people who buy the portable refrigerator freezers. They're compressor-based chest freezers, but they're small enough to be portable. Okay. That's getting very popular. They, they are designed more to be travel because some people don't have luck with the dorm refrigerators and vibrations of the road tend to cause the refrigerators and the compressors on the refrigerators to break down. Sure. So when you're going to cook up a, a, like a lasagna or a meatloaf or something that uh, maybe takes more time, is that something that the driver has to plan on, say, when they get up uh, before they start their day, they, they have all the ingredients and then they just throw everything in there or. It would be some, for me, in my case, I would do it, stop it on my 30 minute break. Have mm-hmm. everything thrown together, throw it together on my 30 minute break, put it in the lunchbox oven, turn the lunchbox oven on and continue on the rest of my shift for the next couple of hours. And our, my rule of thumb is when you smell it, it's usually done. <laughs> so when I start smelling it, <laughs> I will stop and unplug it or unplug it. I'll keep the plug, ne- plug it next to me. So while I'm driving, I can just unplug it and let it sit until we're ready to eat. What a wonderful aroma when you're driving down the road. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was looking on your Facebook group, and it says uh, there's a recipe up there for wild hog and venice, venison goulash. Wow. That that sounds pretty yummy. Yeah, we have a few people who their hunters on their off time, mm-hmm. or, they, or they have family members that hunt, and they will bring their, their fresh kills, their processed meats, onto the truck themselves rather than having to buy in the trucks, in the stores, in the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. That's economical. And venison's actually really good for you. It's a really lean meat. Yes, it is. We we like it when we can get it. Sure. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of hard to to get it if it's uh, out of season, not hunting season, and so forth. What are some of the meals that you recommend for new drivers who haven't done this before? Uh good meal to start out with, like I said, would be like a scrambled eggs and hash browns. Mm-hmm. That one can be done in a slow cooker or it can be done in the lunchbox. Um, another good one would be a meatloaf and lasagna. Those are pretty easy to, to, to create and put into a lunchbox and let them cook. Mm-hmm. They don't take a lot of, they're just like set and go. They don't take a lot of act, activity to go inside. Right. Um... I'm trying to think what other good ones are out there. There's so many good recipes, so many good things. I'm too many I can think of at the moment. What but are I, some am- amazing recipes that would surprise people that you can actually do that on a truck? Um, we've done. I've I've done shrimp scampi. Mm-hmm. I have one meal that I did where I, it was stuffed chicken breast, mm-hmm. and it was stuffed with spinach, feta, mozzarella, and tomato. Okay. And I did that all in a rice cooker, and I did it in thir- my, on my thirty minute break. Wow! It's like I I ma- pre made the spinach and mixture, stuffed my chicken breast, put the chicken breast in the rice cooker, and let set that to go while I finished off my driving for another hour and a half. Awesome! And then in the steam basket, in that same thing, I put up put um, cor- corn corn on the cob. 
Uh, I'm sitting here with just a big smile on my face. This, this is, uh, uh, I don't want to say it's unbelievable in the sense that I don't that I don't actually believe you, but this is unbelievable. This is like so cool. Had no really, idea you could do all this in, in in a truck like that. Yeah, I've got one of our members just the other night did um, fried chicken and zucchini. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, he u- he uses a uh, Coleman butane burner mm-hmm. with a skillet for a lot of his meals okay. and to, to, to cook his meals, and he also has the lunchbox cooker. Um, I'm trying to think what else he has. I know he has those two items. I don't remember what other devices he uses. This sounds amazing. Well, I can't wait to hear more of your ideas and tips and and. Uh, the inspirations for drivers to eat on their truck instead of eating fast food. That's a, that's a great, great idea. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show. I'm Shelly Johnson here with Tom Kelly. We'll be back with more from Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck. Coming up, definitely stay tuned. This is the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelly Johnson with Tom Kelly. And today we're talking with Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck. Jen, I was wondering, how do drivers store and organize everything so they can cook on the truck? Uh, many drivers, are, we get creative. We find ways to fit things into the trucks. We, a lot of us will have the double bunks in our cabs. We will clear off the mattress off the upper bunk, and we will create storage systems up there using modular, modular drawer systems. People have built custom-built shelving and boxes that can fit up there. And then I use ladders to, I have a step ladder I keep in my truck to be able to climb up and reach access anything I have stored up in my upper bunk. Mm -hmm. We have another member who had found some small narrow drawers that she stacked, I think 10 high that fit between a cabinet and her, the back of her drive, her passenger seat for storage. It's very creative. We have a whole Facebook guide in our group for just showcasing everybody's different various ways that they do that they have found to store stuff in their truck we have about 18 i think 18 different examples right now and it's constantly growing so how much can you store i i I imagine that it it shocks people how much if you're really organized how much you can really cram in there and, and and find when you need it i have a picture on my facebook my own personal facebook profile Mm -hmm. That after two years in one truck, my husband and I, I, um, we were switching trucks. I pulled out 20 banker size file folder boxes full, Mm -hmm. plus plenty of extra stuff in plastic bags. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm still not sure where it came from or how I got it back into the next truck. (laughs) But it was a lot. (laughs) I would imagine a lot of people would say, gee, come uh, organize my kitchen, right? <laughs> yes. I've, I've surprised people. Our, the way we have set, storage set up in our truck, we have a, one of those intermetro heavy-duty shelving that you put together. We have one of those that goes across the top of the, low, the foot of the bunk that we sleep on. Mm-hmm. And that usually that holds our 80-quart deep freezer. We tend to we like to store a lot of meat, so we don't have to hit the stores every week or so. We don't always have to. We don't always have that kind of time. But since we that covers the bunk, we don't have access to the upper uh, lower bunk. Mm-hmm. We only have access to it through the side box outside. So I use that side box to store waters and any sodas we keep. I've been known to. I've been called the queen of Tetris. Because of the space we keep in there, I can store seven or eight big packs of water, 32-count packs of water, mm-hmm. plus 10 to 12, 12 packs of my, my seltzer water, all so in that space under the bunk. Did you ever anticipate that you would become like the Julia Child of the highway? Um, I think you mentioned that your husband actually had gotten you going in this direction. Yeah, uh, when we first met, I was still very new to trucking, and I knew people cooked stuff in their truck. I had a microwave in it, my truck, but I was going to the store, and I was buying the Hormel Complete's ready meals, the meals in a box, and all the stuff that's really not good to eat except in an emergency. 
and I was living off of that stuff. And he's like, hey, get yourself a lunchbox oven. I was like, I got the points. I'll do it because you can buy those. Save yourself cash. Buy it in a truck stop with using your points from your fuel cards. And I bought one of those. And he's like, here, get the cooking bags. Make yourself some some barbecue ribs. You put some ribs in the in the bag. Put the bag in the box. Put some barbecue sauce on it. My first four way for my first venture with that one was I put it in. I started smelling it. I didn't unplug it fast enough. The bag the bag melted. I had put rib juice all over my truck. Oh dear! From the box exploding. Oh Oh, my gosh! (laughs) It'd be a mess. Yes, it it was kind of a mess. The ribs were good though. (laughs) I bet. (laughs) But it was. I that was my first lesson. Is excuse me. Oh no, that's fine. My my first learn. My first lesson was. Um, when you smell it, it's done. Don't Makes sense. don't skip that point. Unplug it at that point. So, what can drivers buy to cook on the truck? I know they're different appliances, but um, if they're just starting out, what are the options you recommend? And as they advance, uh, what are some other options? Um, we re- we recommend for someone who's just starting out. Mm-hmm. Um, they save their fuel points from the truck stops. And they can buy the um, like a Road Pro lunchbox or the Road Pro um, roaster oven. Those are twelve volt devices that you can use on any truck in any car anywhere. And they're good for they're good for scrapes starting out because it doesn't cost you a penny when you're fueling at these places. And then from there they decide what they're how they like to cook. Mm-hmm. Do they like to cook using um, a burner with a skillet? Would they rather just use a microwave to cook with, um, a rice cooker, slow cooker, electric skillet? It goes on from there. We usually ask the person when they say, what can I get to put on my truck? We ask them, what's your budget? Does your company allow you to have an inverter and what size? And what's your cooking style? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a cooking style that you're very active into your meals, you're going to want to use a skillet with either a frying pan and a burner or you want to use an electric skillet. And that means the electric skillet means you need to have a minimum of a 1500 watt inverter or better. And using the a Coleman burner, butane burners, you just need to buy the cans of butane and you keep your frying pan handy. Okay. So what about uh, the person who really doesn't like to cook but wants to eat better and doesn't necessarily want to eat the standard microwave meals, which, like you said, they're they're high in sodium? Uh, what do you recommend? Can they put something together and then actually nuke it? Yeah, there's actually great great devices out there now. Technology is amazing these days. Nowadays, you've got a mi- microwaves that can air fry. And that's become a very popular device on our in our group, or actually in all the cooking groups. Um, it's a device that does not only microwaves food, but it, you can air fry food and you can bake food. And the Galan's three in one microwave. It's we it's very popular and we love it. I mean, people will pull out a steak out of their cooler and throw it into the air fryer and have a steak in twenty minutes, just the way they like it. Wow, and it's really and tasty. Oh, tasty, yeah. It's out seasoned the way, just the way you want it. Not over salted, not under salted, not too much of any, any other seasonings that might bother you. So you could do a baked potato in there and all kinds yes. of stuff. And the way that these are, you can probably bake that potato right when you're still frying your steak, too. Okay. Very cool. You know, I bet with proper planning, drivers can save a lot of money doing this. Oh, yes, they can. With um, today, Getting to getting, it may not always be easy getting to the supermarket, but um, services like Instacart and Shipped and Favor and some of the other shopping services, mm-hmm. they will bring your food, the groceries out to you to the truck stop. Oh, very cool! I hadn't thought about uh, that, but that makes sense. It's, I mean, it's very helpful. We use, we've used it quite a few often. I'll go if we stop at a truck stop and knowing we're going to be there at least two or three hours, uh-huh. and it's early enough. I will see if the one of my one of my things one of the one of the services has a shopper in the area, and then go from there and put my order in and 
get my order in a few hours. How do you uh, give them directions as to where you're parked? <laughs> uh, they ask you to give them any special directions, and I've got an icon, um, a very noticeable truck. That we helps. call our truck. We tr- we call our truck the Purple People Eater. <laughs> oh, very cool! I like that. <laughs> and it's so. I know some of the listeners may have seen it out there. It's a purple truck, and it's got green dragon wings on the side. That's why you didn't call it Barney. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was what I was afraid. My husband was thinking about doing that when we were waiting for the truck to come in. Or either that or the great ape. <laughs> I was like, so many people, when they decorate their trucks, they just put the character up on the on the side of the truck. I was like, let's make the truck the character. That's cool. So the yeah. truck's got wings. It's got a horn on the roof. It's got a tail on the back. Oh, how neat. And the person who did the violin made a, sun, a sunscreen for the windshield that is a uh, eyeball. That when, like, when we're parked, when we go to the truck shows, when we used to go to the truck shows, we'd put the eyeball in the window. Oh, so man. it would just sit there and everybody could walk by and see the whole character of the truck. Just out of curiosity, who, who customized your your truck? Uh, we have a friend out in Columbus who um, runs a company called Make It Your Own Graphics. Uh-huh. She, she, she can also be found on Facebook. I mean, she did an amazing job with it. It's reflective vinyl. So when you... At night, it can be lights flash on it. The wings glow. Oh, very cool. <laughs> it's great for safety that somebody can There's no excuse for somebody doesn't see your tractor. Absolutely. Safety and, and just too cool. I like that. And we've nicknamed our, our – in, our, in Cooking on the Truck, we have a, a thing of naming our trucks, our kitchens. So my kitchen is called the Monster Cafe. I like it. And we have other mem- all the members have other names for their their kitchens, and they'll, when they're baking their post, they will say what the name of the kitchen from such and such kitchen or from such and such um, truck. This mm-hmm. is what we we have, and they post a picture of what they cooked, and we all enjoy it. So you're having a lot of fun with it. That that's that's neat. Yes. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelby Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck. We're definitely going to have some more great tips from her coming up. Definitely stay tuned right here on TNC Radio. Live. TNC Radio. Live, your commercial driver navigation station. This is the Trekkers Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck, which is a Facebook group. You know, Jen, you were talking about drivers uh, when we before we went to break, naming their kitchens and their semis. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, it really brings out the personalities of people. I'm, I'm actually seeing one on your Facebook page right now that says uh, "Hammer Down, Chow Down." Um, very creative. Um, so yes. people are having a lot of fun with food, which uh, that that's neat. Yes, it is. It's very creative. Everybody's there's some surprising names um, with some of the members. Like uh, like I said, my my truck's kitchen name is Monster Cafe mm-hmm. to go along with the theme of the Purple People Eater. Um, previous years, I had oh, what did I have? My blue truck was was Papa Smurf, we called it. So it was Papa's, Papa's Diner. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, my puppies are acting up again. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, puppies do that. Yeah, Jen warned us about this before we started the show. And for our listeners, there's nothing wrong with your radio. Uh, she has a couple of new puppies in the background who are having a fantastic time. And you said they were mini- miniature schnauzers, Yes. Yes, these two are miniature schnauzers. Oh, They're wonderful. So cute. Yeah, they are so cute. And I had one named Wags. And, uh, named kind of Wag? Wags? Wags. W- yeah, okay. W-A-G-S. All, all they do yeah. is wag that stuff. That's right. It just goes back and forth. Like, it's so cute. Yeah. Yes. Big, big these, these, two, these two are Drifter and Queenie because they're pure Snow White. Mm-hmm. So it's Snow Drift and Snow Queen. But I, I lovingly call them double in trouble because Drifter is a 22-pound dog and wow. Queenie's 11 pounds. 
Mm-hmm. And he's double her size, and she's the trouble. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's always interesting. The little ones are even with cats. The little ones can be the most trouble. It's like, yeah, watch me. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh huh. Okay, but. Back to the kitchen. Yeah, so tell, yes. tell us about the group. You, 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 <laughs> yeah. you, you started to tell us about that earlier, and uh, we went in a different yeah, direction. The, tell, tell us about the group itself that, you, that you've got on Facebook. Well, the group itself was created, I don't know, about nine, ten years ago when Facebook first started creating groups. It was created by another person who unfortunately has left the group. She had other, other things going on in her life that she couldn't keep running the group any longer. Mm-hmm. And she left the group to us, and we were taking. Oh, we were helping her out at the time, and then she she offered to give us the group, and that's where we created. I do have a logo for the group, which I haven't been using lately because we try to showcase what people are creating on the on the group banner page, and that we've just a, grown. I'm sorry. There's a yummy recipe. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's some pictures of food that made me hungry when I saw it. <laughs> Oh, that's why we want people to come in. Mm-hmm. And we have, and we've just grown from there. We've we've tried a few contests, but believe it or not, the members just don't seem to want to do the contests. What kind of contests? I, just, uh, I we've done around the world challenges. We had a few. We had go, go, that, had that going for a little while, where we would say you got to pick a recipe from somewhere in like India. And be creative and create, find a recipe that you can make on your truck, trying to challenge people and get them outside of their normal zones. And we've had a few people, one person actually, one couple went to a market where they were able to talk to somebody to buy when they were buying their spices, mm-hmm. who helped them actually pick out a good Indian style recipe. And we would have people, they would cho- send in their pictures, send in the recipe and have people, have the rest of the group members would vote on it. Ooh, that sounds like a good one. Yeah, it does. It worked for a couple of months because we would give them the whole month, like two or three weeks to get the recipe together and then two weeks to vote. Cool. And it, it was for a little while. Then it just seemed the only the same people were the only ones who kept entering. Right. Yeah. Like I couldn't get out of 5,000 people, I could get three people to enter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got 5,000 people in your group? We actually now we're up to a little over 7,500. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. And yeah. if they're from all over the U.S., are they also in Canada? They're from all over the U.S., from Canada. I think we have a few from international as well. Wow. Oh, very cool. As long as they're cooking in their trucks, they're welcome to join the group. What a great way to swap recipes, though, that you wouldn't normally yes. see. No, it's, it's an amazing way to do it. I've learned some some great recipes that I've, I've tried here at home. So, so let's put ourselves in the, okay, so there's a guy right now, let's say he's in Colorado you know, driving up or down one of the mountains. And he's listening to this and he's thinking, I would love to do that, but I'm intimidated. I don't know how to get started. I don't, are, is there a place in your group for people who are just getting started and want to ask questions? Yeah, there might be a dumb question in there or two or three, there, but they want to get started. There are no, there are no dumb questions in the group. Great. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we encourage people to ask questions. And our group is very good about providing good advice. Okay, so you don't need to be afraid to join the group that you're going to get laughed at no. or something like that. No, we won't. We won't do that here. Good. If somebody tries that, they're gone. Okay. I we yeah. we we're one of the few drama free groups on Facebook for, re, with regards to cooking on, in your truck. Yeah. And we have members who are only in our group because of that. Good. We don't let people make fun and ridicule others for their lack of skill or not. That's refreshing. Yeah, because I think it, I think you know some of these guys are big burly guys, and they don't need the drama. You know, if they want to, no. they want to get into this, but they don't want to have a you know a fifteen point question about because they didn't spell asparagus right that they're gonna you know have to pay the piper we, or something. You know, we had a joke going because somebody autocorrect was really really could be really funny sometimes. It can be. <laughs> we had someone typing chicken. Chicken breast, and they were coming out. It was coming out with chicken breast milk. Oh, how funny! <laughs> or chicken nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter what they did, they do it. So we would just—it was just something that became a joke. Yeah. Because we knew it was autocorrect. We knew it wasn't. Right. It wasn't done on purpose. Right. Um, and for for beginners, like the person I told you, she used to make really 
get really creative and really make really good gourmet style meals. She she was somebody who was intimidated at first uh-huh. with making stuff on the truck, and once we she started trying and making meals and seeing being successful and encouraging getting the encouragement from the group to keep trying, she moved on to the point where she was making these gourmet style meals. Was she a gourmet she, cook to begin with, or is this just something she no. was to? She at home. She would she cooked like this at home too. Okay, um, but it was she was she called herself a, 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 an un self taught gourmet chef. Wow. She I mean she she had had a six video feature over on Progressive. <laughs> wow. Progressive Insurance actually had her make a video of six different recipes that she could make on the truck. Fantastic. Okay, Fantastic. so you hear that guys, no reason to be intimidated. You don't have to no. feel bad if you don't know if you don't understand everything right at first. These guys are going to take care of you and and make sure you're, that you're okay. Everybody messes up at some point when they're learning learning to cook. Yeah, like I course. said, my you ribs see. were all open. The juice from my ribs were all <laughs> yes. over the place my first time. Yeah, see, the, so that's a great example. I, I, I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, uh, even the, even the host of the group had to do her learning too. So I've, I mean, I've it, had plenty of failures. I've had plenty of surprising successes too. Like going, okay, I've got this, this, and that in, in that truck. What do I make with it? I don't know, but I'm throwing it all into a pot together, and when it's done, I'm calling it edible. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually comes out that that's one of the best recipes I've ever made. Sure. sure. And, of course, I can't remember how I did it. Right, right, right. What are yeah. some of the things to watch out for? Um, can you, you know, obviously you said you need an inverter and all of that. Are there certain appliance tips in terms of safety and that sort of thing on the, on the, the truck that people need to be mindful of? Um, you do want to make sure that wherever you – you place your device if it's a slow cooker or something that's going to be cooking over time that you place it somewhere where it's not going to get affected if by too much by the road by, by the road bounces mm-hmm. or get knocked over and if you have a way to strap it down strap it down so it's secure we have members who will put a slow cooker or something they'll get a milk crate or okay. a storage box and put the device on on the floor of the truck in that box while it's cooking Mm-hmm. So that way, if it does get knocked over, it's the mess is contained. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. I used to use I used to use a um, slow cooker, and I would bungee cord the lid on, and I had it in a sh- in a shelf space that was kind of small and contained, so it didn't get knocked over while we were driving. But those bungee cords always kept the lids on, except for one time. When I woke up to my phone with a big question mark on it going, what the heck happened? <laughs> After it got spilled on by some grease without, from something I was cooking. Oh. Sure. What would drivers do without bungee cord? What a great invention. Uh, oh, that yes. Velcro, huh? And duct tape. No, the best invention of Velcro is now the 3M Velcro, the plastic Velcro. It's the heavy-duty stuff. Mm-hmm. That will hold anything almost anywhere. Oh, good. So you recommend using those types of things to secure items because otherwise you can have stuff flying all over the place. Yes. Like when I mentioned earlier, I have my upper bunk, I use a storage and I have a step ladder. Mm-hmm. My step ladder, when it's not in use, goes across the front of the, step, up, the upper bunk and is used as a safety gate to keep anything in the bunk up there and not falling down oh, in yeah. case of a short stop or hard braking. Very cool. Yeah, very We're going to have some more tips here from Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show with Shelly Johnson and Tom Kelly. Stay tuned for more coming up. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson here with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck, who's had some great information. You know, Jen, I imagine your group really took off and grew during the COVID shutdowns, where no drivers could find a place to eat. And I met, I bet a lot of them have been become converts who say cooking on the truck's pretty cool now. Oh, yes. We we did get a lot of new members coming in at the beginning of um, the pandemic last year when all the truck stops stopped shutting, started shutting down all their, their restaurants and not even serving truckers. And um, they were surprised at how easy it really was to get started and because they were like, well, okay, how, what do I need? And we would help them by asking them questions about what they needed, what their budget was, what kind of devices they had av- electricity they had available in their truck, either they had a 12 volt or they had an inverter. And we would go from there to decide what they needed to start with, 
and how they want to do it. And then like, well, how do I start shopping? And we're like, well, you can go to stop at any Walmart, for, call ahead, make sure you can park at these Walmarts. Because right. we all know we've all had problems with Walmarts. I says, call ahead, ask them if you can stop and park to go shopping. Try other large supermarkets as well. I've had luck doing that with Myers and Kroger's if they had park, large enough parking lots. And go in and do your shopping. And if you can't do that and you're going to park somewhere, plan to park close to a city where you can check for the instant card and shipped to see if one of their, they have a shopper nearby who can deliver to you within a few hours and do your shopping on with the shopper. I bet a lot of the drivers, especially with the COVID shutdowns, did a lot of that because uh, it limited the exposure too in the stores. And- yes. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yes. So, um, we've had quite a few have turned to using the shoppers and we've had a few discussions about tips on how to get what, exactly what you want ordered. Mm-hmm. So what are some staples that drivers should have at all times, like salt, pepper, uh, cooking oil? Uh, the, the oil would depend on what your what kind of device you're using to cook. I would say keep it oil for if you're using a skillet or a fry pan mm-hmm. or maybe the air fryer. Um, salt, uh, salt and pepper, your favorite seasonings. We, our, us personally, we keep salt, pepper, garlic powder and some seasoning salt. And then I have a few other extra surprises. Cause at one point I had an addiction to seasoning and I kept four drawers full of various types of seasonings in our truck. Wow. And I eventually was like, this is too, this is too much. I mean, I had Greek seasonings. I had Italian seasonings. I had Indian seasonings, whatever I would feel like I would, I would order these seasonings and just store them on the truck. I'd be like, Oh crap! What I'm cooking tonight, and whatever I felt like, however I felt like seasoning something is how I ended up doing it. Sure, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, did, so, did Did you have a specific uh, type of food that you liked to cook before you got on the truck? Were you a uh, you know an Italian I'm, cooker or, or anything like that? I'm a more comfort food type of cooker. Yeah, yeah. One of my husband's favorite dishes is cube steak and gravy with mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. Okay, see, mm-hmm. now you're really getting me hungry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds good. And I would, well, lasagna is another good one. I'm, Ita- I'm part Italian, so lasagna and spaghetti were always an easy one for me to do. How do you even do spaghetti use spaghetti in the truck? How would you uh, do noodles? <laughs> or the pasta? Right? For, I, there, if you have an electric skillet, there's a trick using you put the spaghetti in the bottom of the electric skillet, put water in the skillet to just cover the spaghettis and turn it on and let it heat up and boil and simmer until it's done. Okay. And there's another method where you can pre soak your pasta in a bowl for a few hours in just regular tap water mm-hmm. and let that go for a few hours. And in the meantime, in my slow cooker, I have my sauce going or sauce and whatever meat I'm cooking in the sauce. I'll have that cooking and I'll have that put that on high about two hours before I'm ready to finish out the meal. And when it's done at two hours and I get parked and I'm ready to go, I turn turn it off, take drain out the water from the pasta in the bowl, mm-hmm. put add the it's still it's still firmish, but it's not as hard as it was dry. I put that in the sauce, let that soak for another about thirty, forty five minutes while I go walk my dogs. Okay. By the time the dogs are done walking, this this pasta is actually done cooking in the sauce. Wow, that's fantastic! And we've had we've had other members who will use um, electric kettles and okay. boil the water in the kettle, and then boil. I've, even I've done it. Boiled wa- boiled the water into the kettle, added the pasta into the kettle to finish boiling it and heat cooking it, and then draining the ke- water out of the kettle, and then pouring the pasta out, all cooked. That's really well, amazing. Yeah, that's it great. actually stuff you could try at home if you had to, you know. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So, Jim, we're, we're we're always safety conscious on our on our shows. Uh, a, a word in here to the wise: uh, a lot of these things you don't do while you're driving. You, you, you know, the the slow cooker stuff. Sure, you can you know have that, but you know, don't be trying to fry an egg while you're driving down the road. Not a good idea. No, I don't recommend it. But we've had a few members who team drive. 
Mm-hmm. And oh. who like this one is driving and the other one is prepping yeah. the meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They they've learned how to slice vegetables while you know, the driver is driving. Yeah. Now that's definitely something that I would never do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we don't like we don't I, like you, you being around sharp knives anyway though, Shelley, so. No, very true. <laughs> yeah. You you can't put me around anything to anything too sharp because I do have a bad habit of slicing fingers. Ooh, I, yeah. I've done that before. Not fun. So I try to stay away from that. So I try not to do anything that can lead me to do that because I could slice my finger standing still. Mm, yeah. So we have about a minute left here, Jen. How do people find your group and, and join up? Because it sounds like a great resource for drivers and to eat well. On oh, the road. It's actually pretty simple. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, we're at the group called Cooking on the Truck. We have we have a business page. Also, you you may find that, but I think we have the group set up from there too. Okay. Okay. Cooking Absolutely. on the truck, and it's on Facebook. Yes. All right. We'll have a link for that from from our page too, so that uh, so those who are listening to us over our, our page uh, look there in a little bit. You'll be able to find it there. Excellent. Yes. Great information, Jen. Uh, things I never thought you could do on a truck, and. Very economical and a good way for drivers to eat healthy and well and stay away from fast food and save some money, too. We've been talking with Jen Cole of Cooking on the Truck here on TNC Radio Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. We've got the evening surge coming up with more news, information, traffic and weather, and even the strange stories once in a while that I like to pull out. Definitely stay tuned right here on TNC Radio Live. Mm-hmm. TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Hi, this is Tom Kelly, managing partner of Emsico LLC, doing business as TNCRadio.live. The website TNCRadio.live and any content or podcast related to the website are copyrights of Emsico LLC, copyright 2021. All rights reserved. Any redistribution or reproduction of all or any part of the contents in any form is prohibited other than the following. We welcome you to download and play the publicly available podcast and share with others for personal use. Please acknowledge TNCRadio.live as the source of the material. You may not, except with our express written permission, distribute or commercially exploit the content. And while we endeavor to keep the information up to date and correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind expressed or implied about the completeness, accuracy, reliability, suitability, or availability with respect to the website, the podcast, or the information, products, services, or related graphics contained on the website or podcast for any purpose. Any reliance you place on such information is therefore strictly at your own risk. For additional information, including details regarding monetization of this podcast, send email to podcasts at tncradio.live. 